Hello, Facebook, YouTube. Yep. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yep. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. What is we going to talk about here? Ooh, yes, 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 yes. The reality of... Oh, the topic of this message is... For those, it's time for separation, y'all. It's time for separation, y'all. Lambs, goats, yeah, it's time for separation. It's time to separate from, you know, the world, you know. It's time for that separation, but people don't know what time it is, you know, uh, that uh, I'm noticing that people are not really seeing the reality of the truth. You know what I'm saying? That we don't know what time it is, but it's time for separation. It's time for separation within the heart. Yes, separation according to the heart. No more lip service. Say, Lord, I'm, Lord, I love you. And la, 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 la. But it's time for the separation of the heart concerning the things of this world. And... And, you know, the Bible talks about, I did a message on the called and the chosen. I hope you check it out on Mac Johnson. The reality, type in the call and chosen. Beside the reality of the call and the chosen. But here's the thing. Um, the topic of this message is related to the call and chosen. It's talking about, you know, the, the reality of the maybe and the must. The maybe and the must. You know, what is I'm talking about? What is I'm talking about? Well, here's the thing is, you know, God asks us to do something. Uh, God, God speaks to each and every individual each and every day. I mean, everybody hears, hears, hears the voice, you know, but how much uh, what's in our hearts are going to determine how much we will take heed to that voice or how much we will ignore the voice, you know? How much uh, love we have in our heart will take heed. How much lust we have in our heart, we will ignore. And the thing is, we are not realizing that we are hearing a voice that is all about helping better others and we don't really, you know, and and... You know, it's kind of like, you know what, Jesus said, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind, and love your neighbor, your neighbor, you know. And I tell people, neighbor means how do you conduct your relationships with people, you know, it be concerning yourself. Because it says, as you love yourself. More likely that how you will treat yourself is how you will treat others. If you treat yourself good, and great, you will treat your neighbor that way too. <laughs> yes, um, with the same love that you will love yourself. But anyway, um, now the thing is, this love is supposed to, uh, um, that we're supposed to develop inside us, according to you know First Corinthians thirteen. I mean, that really, you know, Paul really states. The true reality of the love of God, you know, pretty much in, you know, First Corinthians thirteen, and and he 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 say those words that people don't like, you know, in their hearts. It's called all that all, you know, language that you know he talks about, you know, and that people are not, you know, or people that that has lust in their hearts, you know, concerning the things of the world are uncomfortable with that word because it's telling, kind of telling them that they should give everything to God. Mm, ooh, that's kind of a little bit too extreme to certain people to want to give everything to God. Ugh, not good there. But um, that's what the kind of like the whole ideal is all about. But, you know, you got to, you know, see it for what it is according to, you know, it is written and not what you want to write down based upon the lust of your flesh. But here's the thing. Thing is, 
it's all about these two, like I said, love and lust. It's how much is this in your heart that when God speaks to you, it goes, is your heart is so full of love that you will say, it's a must that I must do the will of God. Yeah, like kind of like what Jesus did, you know, that he said, not my will, but thy will I will do and did it to the full extent in spite of the rejection of, you know, in the separation of his disciples and being in jail and being slapped in the face by Caiaphas and, you know, and being sent to the Romans to be rejected and by his people and all in spite of and being crucified and beaten and bruised, you know, all this affliction. He was willing to do the will of God concerning him being the Lamb of God, understanding that it, that is his purpose that he was came to this world to do. You know what I'm saying? And it was a must. Everything was a must. Everything was a must. It wasn't, you know, really in in the... And because he said the spirit is willing, more likely willing to must do what it's supposed to do. But the flesh, yes, I'm getting there. Maybe. Oh, we have maybe lukewarm Christians out there. Yes, maybe I will do this for God. Maybe I will be a living sacrifice. Maybe. I will tell somebody I love them. Maybe I might forgive somebody that done me wrong big time. Maybe, maybe, maybe I will, you know, fellowship with other Christian and believers and come one accord with them. Maybe I will participate in, you know, helping to feed the hungry. Maybe that are out there, you know, it's like that, 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 that I might... Or I will almost, shout out to Ezekiel, <laughs> that, that the most dangerous world in the, word in the Christian walk with God is called almost. You know, that you almost did it, but you didn't go all the way. You know, that gee, God is not looking for. You know, he, he, didn't, he didn't, God gave all. His, his son, you know, God in the flesh, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel. So he kind of wants all to come back, you know what I'm saying? All to give back to him, you know. But we are lustful view of this situation. Looks like, well, maybe I will walk by faith and not by sight. But I'm kind of scared of certain things, you know. Yeah, but look. This is, like I said, fourth quarter. This is fourth quarter. I mean, these blood moons and this uh, solar eclipse coming up on March 20th is saying fourth quarter. I mean, that, that heaven is saying fourth quarter, but you are not, you know, kind of seeing that because your lust of your flesh and you're concerned about the things of what's going on in the world system that you're involved with. You know, you're not kind of looking up at the uh, fourth quarter, you know, um, blood moons and solar eclipse, you know, that the signs of the heavens that, you know, God is, you know, showing us. Um, yes, it's fourth quarter, guys. Uh, hope you realize that concerning the blood tetra, um, it's time to come to an understanding that we must learn how to become live for Jesus Christ with the must. You know, it's a must. It's necessary. It's, it becomes necessary that I must learn how to become, to live in God's righteousness, you know, and not in my own righteousness. You know, Romans 10. Um, not in our own righteousness, but we must, you know, be about God, learning how to operate in God's righteousness that we will learn how to be about like Jesus Christ, a must to fulfill the purpose and will of God. You know, to, he died on the cross for our sins. That's what the purpose he came here. We have a purpose to do the same thing. But if we trying to uh, maybe, maybe with the, you know, the lukewarm maybe, yeah, um, you, watch this, might not make it 
to the, your d direction or you might not fulfill your purpose and you might go to the other place, you know. Possible might. You might go there. You might not go there. But that's a serious, you know, crazy risk to try to take. But, you know, thing is, this is what this reality is. time to separate the lambs from the goats like in Ezekiel. You know, Ezekiel talked about the lambs and the goats. It's time to separate. And God, who, who are those are his, who are not his, not his, you know, light, darkness, separation, your heart, not your lips, your heart will determine which side you're going to be on, so I encourage you to try to be about, you know, the uh, word of God, and that mainly I encourage First John and one, fellowship with the light, and when you fellowship with the light, that's really showing you that you really on a team, not just going to church and, you know, Sunday and just, you know, hey, everybody, hey, everybody, da, 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 da. praise Lord. Go on. No, no. Fellowship with the light. And as much as you do that, that means you're telling you that you're trying to be a part of the light. But as much as you fellowship with darkness, showing you how much you want to be on darkness, you know. And if you follow that, you know, first John and one and two, you'll kind of see a theme concerning the Antichrist. Oh, yeah, Antichrist theme that the Antichrist will come, you know, and this will happen, and, you know, how ugly that's talking about. But that's what it's all about, fellowshipping with the light if you about the must, fellowshipping with the darkness if you about the maybe. Maybe I'll live for you, God. Maybe I won't. All right, that's the message. Hope you got understanding. To God be the glory, Him forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen.